Hi, I'm Ray, and I'm a junior in my undergraduate studies uh, in counseling. Currently, I'm enrolled in a masculinities class in which we have been given some creative freedom to explore masculinity in our own way. I've taken this opportunity to reflect on the current artists I've been preoccupied with for the past few weeks. So today I'm going to be discussing the concept of navigating masculinities and how it can be applied to the masculinity of the rapper TJX6. I chose this rapper in particular because I was very inspired by his style and the content that he raps about. I have to admit, I have tried to navigate the dark web, but I have been unsuccessful. So I, when I heard him rapping, I was very interested. I also find the idea of scamming as a way to scam the system of capitalism a very intriguing idea. I can relate to struggling and living in poverty, as well as feeling as though there are a million people in places telling you you will fail. I can connect with his story of creating a life for himself that he wants and he feels successful in. Albums, watching his music videos, and watching his interview appearances, so this is where I've gathered my knowledge from. Obvious disclosure, I cannot claim to be an expert on anyone's life other than my own, so what I'm going to be analyzing today is going to be based off my interpretations of what I've seen and the persona that TJX6 puts on for his rap career. A persona can be defined as an aspect of someone's identity that is presented or perceived by others or a role or a character that a person takes on for entertainment. This may or may not be true personally for TJXX or it may be somewhat true, but for the purposes of this video we're going to assume it is a persona or a work of fiction, but we're also going to analyze this so-called fictional persona as a real identity or person as well as interpret his actions literally. To begin, I'm going to start by defining the overarching theme of navigating masculinities. Navigating masculinities is an area of research and scholarship that examines the ways in which various dominant and subordinate identities, such as ethnicity, class, and gender, work together to produce masculine identities in different ways. These systems of power and inequality that produce dominance and subordination work together and work at the same time, making it essential to have a holistic view of a person's identity in order to understand how someone experiences oppression and privilege. Intersectionality is a term coins to define the ways that people occupy multiple social positions at one time. Using the metaphor of a birdcage to illustrate the idea of intersectionality, we can imagine the entire birdcage as oppression overarching. So look at just one bar of the cage would be to just look at one way a person is oppressed. We have to look at the entire birdcage to get a holistic picture. With this in mind, we move to labeling the dominant ideas surrounding masculinity at this time. In American society, the hegemonic masculine identity is composed of a white race, cisgender, heterosexual, wealthy, educated, middle-class, westernized identity. This identity is privileged in society because many institutions are set up to benefit white men and keep a cycle of wealth for their descendants. Those who own the wealth are also known as the owning class. Thinking about intersectionality and this metaphor, class can serve as the top of the birdcage that holds everything together. Building off this idea, the main dimension I want to discuss of the identity of TJX6 is class. I chose this dimension because class is directly linked to social inequity. I believe that, that as we are being lied to as consumers and those of lower classes, while scamming is a way of outsmarting a system that was not meant for us to win. When we define class, we are referring to someone's social rank in terms of income, wealth, status, and power. Furthermore, when we define masculinity in terms of American society, we often define it in terms of these same ideals, such as income, status, and power. Men that have these things are said to be breadwinners or providers. We can see that the ideas of masculinity in America are tied to capitalistic gain. According to Sensway and D'Angelo, capitalism is the name given to the economic system in which basic necessities are commodified or privately held, like by corporations or shareholders, as opposed to being available to everyone. To Marx, capitalism is synonymous with inequity because without this, it would not function. This idea becomes clear when we reflecting on the idea of the owning class, or those who inherit wealth, 
also known as the ruling class. Sensoy and D'Angelo describe classism as the systematic oppression of poor and working people by those who control resources, jobs, wages, education, food, services, medicine, cultural definition, and so on, just to name a few. What makes this also dangerous is not just that the ruling class controls all the resources, but that class is virtually the same as political power, the ability to influence policy, control capital, and shape political institutions, which all leads to the dominance of the owning class over all other classes. This leads to class socialization, which instills ideas of upper class people as naturally smarter and more articulate than lower class people. Upper class people define the norms and the boundaries for what is good in society and what is not. This is most obvious when we look at commonly held beliefs in American society. One such belief is the American dream. This is the idea that anyone who works hard enough can become successful in market capitalism. In fact, over 70% of Americans overestimate class mobility and believe that personal motivation is more important to mobility than the economic circumstances they were born into, when in fact, this is untrue. Only 6% of children born to parents with income at the very bottom rise to the very top. What is funny about this narrative of the American dream is that unknown numbers of the population subscribe to it, when in reality, the average CEO in America was paid 354 times more than what the average worker in their corporation earned. All the while, tax policies continue to put a larger burden on everyone else rather than tax the rich. I have worked hard for what I have. I'm working and I go to school to provide myself with the life that I want to have. I've experienced in the past being preoccupied with life outside of school that made it difficult to succeed. And I have also dealt with trauma. I admire TJX6 for creating a means to do better than me financially and a lot of other people who took the route of going to college, which is also a politically stratified institution. Though the American dream prides itself on having class mobility, the fact of the matter is, in the United States over the last 30 years, the growth in income of the bottom 50% has been zero, whereas incomes of the top 1% have grown 300%. While mainstream rhetoric would have the pop population believe those that steal money through internet scamming are ruining the middle class's chances at financial stability and are worthy of being villains or criminals. TJX6 demonstrates masculinity in which he has achieved the lifestyle of the reconceptualized breadwinner. While it may be untraditional, the language and sophistication of hacker techniques can be said to be a trait of its own. This achieved financial success has still said to be criminal. While the owning class continue inheriting stolen wealth, not depending on work for income and living off the interest of their financial assets. The owning class continue to not be seen as criminal, as well as place individual blame on consumers for wealth inequalities.